Hello, I'm Darren Alf from BicycleTrainPro.com. I'm in Southern California at the moment, but I thought it'd be fun today to take a look back at some of my bike tours from the past. Today I want to start at the very beginning when I first started video blogging about my bike tours in the country of Ukraine in Eastern Europe. Um, this bike tour took place in uh, the spring of 2015, I was cycling from Poland to Romania. That was the first leg of my trip that year. And I didn't record on video the first part of my trip across Poland and into Ukraine, but I started recording uh, in Ukraine. And so that's what you're going to see here. I am in southwestern Ukraine, only two days away from the border, and you will actually see me cross the border uh, from Ukraine into Romania. So I'm basically just going to give you some behind the scenes info about what it was like to cycle across Ukraine. I may give you a few tips and tricks that you can use on your own bike tours and uh, basically we'll look back at uh, some of the memories from that Ukrainian bike tour. You ready? So here we go. This trip actually uh, in Ukraine was my second time in Ukraine and so um, this was not my first experience in Ukraine um, and the first time I went to Ukraine it was winter time and it was freezing so I was here I think this trip took place in like April of 2015 so it was much much warmer than when I was there before you can see here it looks quite pleasant one of the things that you know when people tell when I tell people that I went to Ukraine a lot of people think it's like some war were born country or something but these cyclists that you see kind of reminded me at least at the time that people in Ukraine live very much ordinary lives just like you and I do probably um, they're trying to live uh, they're eating and being with their family and doing all sorts of normal things so um, I don't know I think a lot of people forget that when they watch the media too much they think a whole country is just war torn or something but that's that's totally not the case this is some silly statue on the side of the road I think it dates back to when the Russians were in Ukraine and the Russians are still in Ukraine but um, anyways I don't know what this is if you know what the statue is please leave a comment and let me know I really like the forests in Ukraine that's one of the things I like most about the country it's like incredibly stark actually compared to say I don't know the forests in Sweden or something like that but um, I think it's really beautiful and the lighting in general in Ukraine I think is, is really spectacular I don't think my videos quite capture how beautiful Ukraine is you know like kind of dirty <laughs> and beat up sense because Ukraine is dirty and beat up uh, for the most part and frankly that's what I kind of like about it um, one of the reasons I like Ukraine and the reason I decided to go back a second time and the reason I would go back a third time is because it still has like a sense of adventure like going on a bike tour there is not so common like it is in say France or the Netherlands or something where there's bike paths and it's all controlled you know Ukraine's a little out of control and that's kind of what I like about it um, this is like a hotel just a cheap hotel that I found I don't know what city I'm in right now but it was just off the side of the road I had to do a little searching to find it but as you can see it's like quite nice and I think the total cost for this hotel was about like thirteen dollars or less maybe ten dollars ten US dollars so I'm just giving a little tour of the you know tiny little hotel room here but again very nice and on this particular trip I stayed in like really nice hotels and the most I ever paid was like I think thirteen dollars so yeah, the, I, the least I paid for a hotel in Ukraine was like $5. That was freezing cold though in the hotel, like I had to sleep in my sleeping bag. <laughs> it was so cold. Um, right there at the end, I'm going to go back a little bit, but right there at the end you just see a clip inside a supermarket and I didn't really film a whole lot inside the supermarket because um, there was a security guard and I was a little afraid about pulling out my camera. I am afraid about pulling out my camera in general um, and pointing it at anybody really because nowadays you just never know like some people are totally open to it and some people uh, not so much. So 
um, in this particular supermarket there was a security guard and I was a little afraid of him but going through the checkout line uh, he could tell that I wasn't from Ukraine she was asking me questions and I wasn't responding blah 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 um, and this guy came over and helped me and he, he didn't speak English but he spoke a little German and I know a little German so we were able to converse in German and uh, yeah and anyways the security guy turned out to be like a really nice guy and shook my hand on the way out and stuff so it made me feel a lot better about being there um, in general I don't like countries or places in general where there's too much security police etc I just finished a bike tour in Barcelona, Spain, and I freaking hated how many police there were there. There was like a policeman on every corner. Frankly, I'd rather deal with the thieves than deal with the police. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I like Ukraine. On to the next video. <laughs> so this video starts with me waking up, and in the video I say, the hardest thing about bicycle touring is getting out of bed. And honestly, I still believe that after like 16 years of bike touring, like the hardest part is just getting out of bed and saying, okay, I'm going to ride my bike today. I'm going to do it. Once you do that, it's a piece of cake. So there I am. That's the name of the town I was in, Ber Berahov, Ukraine. And this is the day that I crossed the border out of Ukraine now. I realize it's only the second video, but I crossed the border out of Ukraine and cross into northern Romania. So unfortunately I didn't record the first part of my trip across Ukraine. I really am kicking myself now, but here we go. So yeah, and uh, I'm just talking to myself. You can see the, uh, just over my left shoulder there, you saw it a second ago, maybe you can't see it now, but the yellow and blue colors of the Ukrainian flag are all over Ukraine. Like when you go across a bridge, it's painted yellow and blue. Uh, when there's like a road sign somewhere, it's painted yellow and blue. So uh, those Ukrainian colors follow you across the country. I don't know what I'm talking about now. I'm just talking about the trip in general, I think. The other good thing about Ukraine that uh, I don't really show, I don't think too much here in this video, is that the roads are in pretty poor condition. Like, this road that I'm showing here looks pretty good, actually, but some of the roads in Ukraine are terrible. Like, there are potholes everywhere. That sounds bad, but actually one of the good things is the cars go really slow because the roads are so bad. Yeah, even here, like over my left shoulder, you can see kind of some of the potholes and stuff. And and even when the roads aren't that bad, like the fact that they're torn up even just a little bit means that you can hear when a car is coming up behind you and you can hear where it is in the road. But look at this road that I'm talking on right now. Like there's not very many cars. Like I've been talking for several seconds now. No cars, no cars, no cars. So anyways, this is just a little town that I happen to pass through. I think I was stocking up on food and water, etc., trying to spend my last Ukrainian money before I cross the border uh, yeah, into Romania. Again, you see, I'm kind of shooting the backs of people rather than the fronts because I'm, I'm just nervous about pointing a camera in people's faces, especially in a foreign country where I can't speak and, and explain myself. But here I am kind of being sneaky, getting some people. And yeah, like I, these sorts of little businesses, street side business here, it's pretty nice actually. But look at the roads, I mean, pretty bad. And then I'm blown away that I cycle all the way across Ukraine and I'm in these terrible, terrible roads and then right before the border of Romania is this bike path with like nobody on it. There's a bike path, I don't know where it's, go it's going to the border. There's a bike path from the border of Romania to the middle of nowhere. And there's a lot of farmland in, U in Ukraine also. If you look off to the right, you'll see the farms. That is what I think of when I think of Ukraine. It's just farmland, potholed roads, this color uh, that I can't quite explain. It's kind of dirt and rust and gold all together. Um, and yeah, that's what I think of when I think of Ukraine. Um, and the, I think the, the other thing that stands out for me is the writing. You know, they don't use the uh, Latin alphabet. They have this acrylic alphabet, uh, which is very different and hard for me to read. Not impossible, but hard. 
and here I am crossing a bridge. There's a horse and wagon. Another thing I like about Ukraine and Romania is that there are still these horse-drawn wagons that you see all across the country. I think that's really cool. Um, and it's not something that you see in more developed countries. So, And now here I am. I'm about to cross the border into Ukraine, or I'm sorry, cross the border from Ukraine into Romania. And I'm saying that I got to put the camera away now because I can't shoot the border. I got to stop the video here because there's a whole story that is frankly not included in the original video. So I get to the border of Ukraine and Romania and there are two guys in full camouflage. They're about seven feet tall. They look like they've killed about a hundred people each. Uh, they're carrying machine guns. One of them is at least. Um, and I go up and I say I want to go across the border and they say uh, in broken English basically that I can't ride a bicycle across the border that I have to go in a car. Well, I don't have a car, obviously. And so they basically say, stand over here and we'll try to find somebody who can take you through the border in their car. Well, I was at this, I wasn't at a crowded, like busy border. I was at some remote border in the middle of nowhere. So like one car would come every 10 minutes or something like that. And a lot of these cars were just packed with people or things. And so there was just no way I was going to get me and my big touring bicycle inside so many of these cars. So I was like basically looking for a van, which was very uncommon, uh, or some kind of big truck, like even like a big semi truck. I was thinking maybe they have room. I can just put my bike in the back of the semi truck in the trailer and then I'll go through. But so I ended up waiting at the border with these like scary armed Ukrainian border guards for over two hours. Uh, and every single car that would come, I'd be like, Hey guys, how about this one? This one looks good. And they'd be like, Nope, not this one. You know, they'd ask the driver, can you know, will you take this American guy through on a bicycle? And they'd be like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Even though they were really only taking me like 50 or 50 meters up the road. That's all it was like 50 meters up the road. They just had a stupid rule that you can't walk or bike across the border. Um, and yeah, so finally this guy came in like a station wagon that was empty in the back, just him in the station wagon. So I was like, Oh, this is it. And, um, the guy's name was Dan and he was actually a border guard himself. He was just off duty. Uh, he had been working at a different border and was going through this border to get to his home in Romania. And so uh, the border guards knew him and they said, hey, would you take this American guy through with his touring bicycle? And the guy was like, oh, I guess I'd do it if I have to. You know what I mean? That's kind of the attitude he had. So I was like, oh, shit, like this guy looks pissed <laughs> to be helping me, but he's helping me. So I just take my bike apart, throw it in the back of the, the station wagon, jump inside and say, thank you. You know, so we get through the border, no problem. Like, if, just like any other border, they look at your passport, they stamp the thing, and you're through. So we get into Romania, but instead of just dropping me right off at the the border, like 50 meters from where I entered, Dan's like in a rush to get home. So he drives me all the way, like 50 kilometers away, back to his hometown, essentially, um, which I think was called Kare or Kale or something like that. It's in northern Romania. Anyways, so that's what you're going to see here is I'm in the car with Dan and at first you see him smiling here but when I first got in the van or in the car with him like he was not smiling. He was he looked angry. Luckily he warmed up a little bit. So but anyways, um, I'm kind of telling the story of what happened here a little bit. But yeah, so I had planned on a specific route through Romania, but Dan, because he drove me 50 kilometers away from where I entered, um, kind of threw my plan out the window. Like, and now I was in this town, Kare or Calais, Romania, that I did not originally plan to be in. Luckily, the the good thing about the way I travel is that I don't have for a lot of times at least, I don't have like a very strict schedule that I have to keep to. I, I knew I had to be in Brasov, Romania in like a week, 
so I knew that I could make up that 50 kilometer difference over the course of the next week. And that's exactly what ended up happening. So um, here I am still. And then you'll see in a moment, Dan just pulls into some parking lot opens up the back door of, of his car and just like throws my stuff out on the road. So there it is, like, welcome to Romania, you know. Good luck, buddy, and that was it. But there's my bike, like I had to take it apart, split it in half entirely just to get it into his car. And then luckily there was a hotel just like a few meters away, a cheap hotel, I think this place cost about 20, 20 US dollars maybe per night but again looks it's fine so it's all you need for one night you know a shower place to sleep and then and wi-fi so yeah that, that's the other good thing about romania and ukraine was all of the hotels uh, except for one that i can remember had wi-fi and i'm addicted to the internet and i need it for my work uh, for working on bicycletrainpro.com etc and so it's always good to have wi-fi and wi-fi that actually works so here I am going down from the ho my hotel room into a supermarket. This is my first Romanian supermarket that I've seen in a while, which is much bigger uh, than the supermarkets that I was visiting in Ukraine. So I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, freaking out at like the selection that I have now. Um, after I got food, I walked around town. It was a really neat little town, this Kare, Kalei, Romania. Um, they had this kind of like a castle or something with a big uh, park around it. So that's what I'm looking at here. It's not so interesting, really. Um, the signs are in Romanian and German and no, no English. So I'm trying to read the sign there. Um, again, knowing German in Europe does come in handy because German is like in Norway they speak German in Romania they speak German you know so um, yeah knowing a little German does help but that's basically it so that was the very first part of my 2015 bike tour across Eastern Europe I am going to do another video like this a behind the scenes video for the second leg of the trip, which takes me from the Ukrainian-Romanian border in the north down to the city of Brasov, of Romania, in the center, basically, of Transylvania, uh, Romania. And so you'll see that in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, I want to do more of these in the future if you like them. So let me know if you like them or um, you know, how I could improve the videos. This was my first attempt, so I'm sure it was pretty rough. But again, uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you like this. Um, and if you did, I will do more of them in the future. That's it. I'm Darren Alf from BicycleTurnPro.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys out on the road sometime soon.